Right, we're now recording. So, question five. Are you happy, Rachel? Yes. Good. Okay, so question five. A vertical hollow um, cylinder of radius 0.5 metres is rotating about its axis. Whoa. A particle P is in contact with the rough inner surface of the cylinder. The cylinder and P rotate with the same constant angular speed. The coefficient of friction between P and the cylinder is mu. Given that the angular angular speed of the cylinder is 7 radians per second and P is on the point of moving downwards, find the value of mu. So this thing's spinning and the, this, this particle is on the edge of it and is spinning round with it. And it's spinning round and round and round. There's, that's all that's happening. It's just the cylinder rotating with this thing stuck on the edge. Not stuck on the edge, but, but on the edge. Rotating round inside there. Um, so, well, let's, let's imagine what's going on with this. That diagram, not terribly helpful, so let's have a, a new diagram that simplifies it, gets rid of the stuff we don't need. We've got this uh, rotation -y thing going on, there it is. That's imagine the path of the uh, particle going round and round. It's stuck to the edge. Here's the, uh, here's the central point about which it's spinning round. We need to think about the forces that are acting. Well, the particle would have a weight acting downwards, mg. It would have a reaction between itself and the edge of the cylinder, because it's touching the edge of the cylinder. Just looking at that, we instinctively feel there is a force missing. Because if we look at that, that just doesn't make sense, does it? It would drop down here. It can't go that direction because there's the, the wall probably would drop down, wouldn't it? <coughs> so there must be some force opposing that dropping down. What is it? Friction up. That's the friction. Right. So that's what we've got going on. Um, we know that we have circular motion, so we have an acceleration in that direction. The acceleration is r omega squared. And so if we resolve horizontally here, using F equals ma, we've got r is the horizontal force in that direction, is equal to mass. What was the mass? We weren't given the mass. m times 0.4 which is r times omega squared, and the, um, that we had 7 radians per second, didn't we? Times 7 squared, which gives us r is 19.6 times n. All right. Um, I think we probably now need to consider what else is going on. If we resolve vertically, We've got that friction is equal to mg because it's, it's not going up or down, is it? It's staying at the same, at the same horizontal circular plane. Um, it's on the point of moving downwards, though. So friction is limiting. That means it's on the point of moving down. So f f is mu r. Which tells us that mg is 19.6 m times mu. And we've got a lovely simple equation here because m cancels out as a common factor on both sides. And if you do 9.8 divided by 19.6, you get a half. Now, you know, just a little word of warning here. If you come up with a value of mu that is not in the range 0 to 1, you know you've made a mistake. So, so just kind of watch out for that, because if that happens, you know you need to look back and work out what you've done that was wrong earlier on. Right. Good. That was just part one. Part two. <coughs> now, part two, we do get to use this diagram. Hooray. The particle is now attached to one end of a light and it's into a string of length 0.5. The other end is fixed to a point A 
on the axis of the cylinder. Find the angular speed for which the contact force between P and the cylinder becomes zero. So you know what will be happening now, it's, it's moving around. At the point that it becomes zero, it's still, and the string is still taut, it's still just about touching that, but not so that there's any contact force. So it's, you know, it's at the point of no longer touching that. Which means we don't need to think about friction anymore. Um, in fact, lots of things have become simpler. To simplify this diagram now, I, I didn't draw the whole thing again, but there's the string. Here's the wall of my cylinder. Here's my particle. I don't have a reaction force because it's no longer touching it. I do have the weight still, and I now have the tension in the string. I've been given some more information as well, haven't I? If we look at that, uh, this string length is 0.5, and this is 0.4. And this angle I'll call theta, just for the sake of having a name to it. Um, will we told anything else? Oh, we, we need to find the angular speed. So we now, yeah, our acceleration is still r omega squared, where r is 0 0.4, but we don't know what omega is. That's what we need to find out. So let's resolve in our directions again. If we resolve vertically, we've got t, or hang on, t sine theta is equal to mg. And we're happy that these are the only two forces now, because yeah, we've got no longer got a contact with the water, there's no friction, there's no um, contact force. Sine theta, um, well, we've got, oh, this, this is quite nice actually, isn't it? See what they've done? 0 0.4, 0 0.5, the right angle triangle, so that's 0.3. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that is 3 fifths of T is mg. Um, so T is 5 over 3 mg. Right, let's look horizontally. Well, this is even simpler. Using F equals ma, we've got T cos theta is the mass. Oh, hang on, what is that? where the open force come from the mass m times the acceleration which is 0 0.4 omega squared and cos theta adjacent over hypotenuse that's 0 0.4 over 0 0.5 so 4 fifths so I've got 4 fifths of t is 0.4 m omega squared I already have T. T is 5 thirds mg. So, so this becomes 4 fifths times 5 thirds mg is 0.4 m omega squared. It's all gone great. m cancels out. Um, 5 cancels out. I'm left with. Some nice stuff. I'm left with, I think, uh, omega squared being g over 0.3. I think that's what it works out as. That would be, wouldn't it? Um, and then if we square root that, we get omega as being, well, it's 5.72 radians per second to three significant figures. Um, yes.
Oh yeah, stop.